Hi everyone, it's House Chat. My name is Rias and we're here with Tony also. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a hidden shadow over there. Should we say her name? Yeah. Can, can you her name in? is Andrea. I don't think she wants to appear. Oh, there she is. There yeah. you go. Anyway, today our segment is called Sharing the Unseen. We're just basically going to be talking about paranormal experiences from people that have submitted their stories, which, you know, that happened like two, three days before, which wasn't actually a lot yeah, of time. Really short of time. Yeah, so like, we're doing this because of Halloween and since it's October, kah? Yeah, yeah. Since, <laughs> since it's October, we're just testing out the whole podcast idea. We don't know how this is gonna go, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's just start. Let's start with your stories. Uh, yeah, the submissions yeah. that you got. Okay, I have one story here from Anon because he wants to stay anonymous in English. It doesn't have any data, but I can start right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is my first story. This was happened back in two thousand one. My wife, Abby, and I, Martin, are parents of two children, a six-year-old daughter and three-year-old son. My daughter, Jess, loves to draw and so we give her all art supplies she needs to keep her entertained for hours. She has a Crayola backpack full of art supplies, make markers, color pencils, crayon, and also construction papers. Jess has piles of drawing in her room and even in her backpack. Most of them are normal and innocent drawing. However, one day, I found a picture in her room that I was kind of confused about at first. It was a picture of some random looking woman holding Jess's hand. But she didn't look like my blonde wife. It was a brunette woman. I asked Jess who woman was and she said it was a woman who would visit her sometimes. Sounds like a... Six year old with imaginary friends would say. When I asked what her friend's name was, he said Lily. This caused immediate alarm to me, so I went to show my wife the pictures. I asked my wife if it looked like her sister. At first, she said it looked like it could be anybody, but when I said our daughter said it, her name was Lily, she gave me this telling look like. If she immediately understood, Lily was the name of Abby's deceased sister. Okay, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Who died before my children were born? We went to Jess' room and asked her who Lily exactly was. Jess again said, "She visited me sometimes, trying to get more details." My wife asked what time she usually visit and what do they talk about. She responded. Sometimes along of the line, she visit at night. Sometimes, when I drawing, my wife asks Jess to draw another pictures of her the next time she sees Lily. This time, with more details, and Jess agreed to do so. From now on, I would keep Jess door ajar, just so we could hear if Jess was talking to someone. It wasn't until a few nights later that. While in the kitchen, we both heard Jess talking to someone in a room. All of a sudden, when we towards to the room quietly to listen to what she was saying, there were long gaps in between what Jess was saying, but she was clearly talking to someone or something that didn't appear to be there because she seemed to be answering questions that we couldn't hear being asked. At one point, Jess said, "They asked about you when they saw my pictures of you. They want me to draw you again." Then Jess stopped talking completely, and that was when my wife and I entered the room and asked if she talking to Lily again. She nodded her head, and I asked where the room, where rooms Lily's was. Jess turned and looked around the room, and then focused to the corner and said. She was standing right there. We looked in the dark corner of the room to nothing. Yet we agreed we felt uneasy feelings in the room and were extremely uncomfortable. My wife said softly to Jess to draw what Lily looks right now, down to every details. After Jess said, "Okay, mom," we left the room. Jess didn't speak anymore and we're left 
feeling a little uneasy. It was a short time later. Jess called her mom back into the room. So both of my wife and I went back to her room and she presented the new drawing. This drawing confirmed our fears. In this new drawing, with a lot of detail, Jess drew Lily to have a small mole above her lips and dressed in white. Lily was buried in white and had a small mole above her lips. My wife was never close with her sister, having only attended a funeral for a short time. Jess had never learned her deceased aunt yet. There were also no pictures around the house that she could have seen. I told Jess that I didn't want her talking to Lily anymore. This was not because Lily did anything particularly horrible in her life per se, but rather it was genuinely scaring me and her mother. We had a priest to come to bless our house and ask her spirit to please live in peace. We haven't heard Jess talk to herself afterward, but sometimes at night we heard a knock from the front door. When I peeked from the window, no one was standing there. Thankfully, it didn't happen anymore and we haven't had to deal with it in future instances. Hmm. Wait, so Lily was the mother's sister? Yeah. Way before her kids born. So, yeah. Then, why why did she come back? You don't know? I don't know. I don't know. It was just a... There is no explanation here. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's really, like, a bit intense when... She's at that, so yeah. Huh. How do you feel about that? It it reminds me of a movie I watched back then, but I don't remember the title. But I'm pretty sure it was, I think it was a Indonesian movie, and basically this girl, basically the same thing lah. Actually, yeah. drawing like a figure that we don't know, and then suddenly the mom's trying to control the daughter, but. Suddenly, apparently, it's her sister. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah. I really don't remember the title of that movie. Yeah. What do you think? Maybe we have like different of a story of horror. So yeah, maybe this this is quite intense for this family, lah. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's quite new to them to being haunted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, can't say the same because <laughs> I've been haunted my whole life for some reason. But we'll talk about that later once we finish reading all of the stories. Yeah. So, do you have any paranormal experiences? Yeah, I do like have a lot, but uh, I don't want to tell it here. You don't? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, well, so, I'll yeah. be telling mine right after this. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to read this story by this person called Alimi Haika. He sent his story through Instagram DMs. So just going to read this straight raw because I haven't read it yet. It all started when I was six years old. I was young and clueless. My parents didn't tell me about not to sleep during dusk, especially the times of sunset, because we all know that it's the time where all the spirits roam around and I was tired from all the adventures I've been through with my friends. So, I fell asleep and woke up at 10 and went straight to my brother's room and fell asleep again. Fast forward, I was awakened by the cold temperature and my body shivered like hell, so I decided to sleep at my parents' room. On my way to their room... I went past the living room, and I took a glimpse of the living room to see the surrounding of it. It was dark and silent. The only thing I could see is a small light ray that was produced by the electronics such as the TV and radio. At first, I didn't really pay attention of the surroundings because I was sleepy, but then I saw someone sitting on the coffee table who looks exactly like my mother and lullabying a baby. And that time... Uh, His younger brother hasn't born yet. And I didn't hesitate to call her. I called her name for quite numerous times, from 10 meters apart to 1 meter. She didn't even nod or look at me, so I was even more curious about it. As I approached her and getting closer to her, she looked at me with bright red eyes, and that's the only thing I could see. As I get closer, she stood slowly and slowly getting taller and taller until the ceiling's height. I was shit scared and I ran towards my parents' door room and banged its door countlessly. The end. Yeah. So, you know, long story short, he woke up. Yeah. 
And then he the saw side. a woman sitting on a coffee table, lullabying a baby, which could have been his bro- his younger brother. Yeah. But yeah, he um he wasn't born yet during that time, so that's that's a bit creepy. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's something like a tanda. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. Like a like a sign like that a sign. his brother is coming. I don't know if that's good or not. You know, because. Yeah. It is a bit scary from like a child's point of view. I'm guessing during this time, um, Alimi is still a child, um, but you know, you know how like there's a saying where, um, for me at least, jinns that are good and bad. So you never know if it's a good one. Yeah. You know, like giving you signs that you know you have a younger brother coming, that type of thing. But um, overall, I do kind of relate to that story because i did have some experiences along the lines of that but yeah i'll, I'll share that again later. Okay. <laughs> you have a you have another story right yeah yeah I okay have. so who's this by okay uh this is a story uh in bm so in bahasa is from nia oh yeah actually it's not bahasa it's pasai iban then so yeah i don't know so I need to translate it right through, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can you can just read it out. I wouldn't know. So, um... But you will translate it during the editing lah, because... Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't... I, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here's the story of Nia. In this, it's Bahasa Iban, so I need to translate it to Bahasa Melayu. So, cerita dia macam ni. Nia ni baru bermula bekerja dekat satu tempat. Dekat satu tempat tu, dia menyewa dekat satu rumah. Dekat rumah tu, selepas tiga hari Nia menyewa dekat rumah tu, uh, Nia adalah beberapa gangguan dekat rumah tu. Jadi, cerita dia bermula uh, selepas Nia balik kerja. Selepas Nia balik kerja, jam lima petang, and then Nia persiapkan diri, kemas, bersihkan diri. Lepas tu, Nia bersyadanglah nak tengok satu movie tu. Dia cerita romantik je, dia bukan cerita seram. And actually... Tak ada pun cerita ni berkaitan dengan cerita hantu apa semua tu. Tapi macam biasa Nia sebelum tidur memang rutin Nia untuk tengok movie. Nak pendekkan cerita maka tertidurlah Nia masa dia tengok movie tu. Nia tak off laptop. Nia just tak post juga cerita tu sebab dia tertidur kan. Lepas tu dia terbangun lah bila dia dengar have a dialogue inside inside the laptop so dia pause lah like pause and then close the tab tapi dia tak off dia tak off laptop tu dalam beberapa minit dalam 10 minit macam tu lah Nia ni dia dia terdengar lagi dia punya laptop tu berbunyi lagi actually Nia macam heran lah kan tadi Nia cakap dia dah close the tabs of the video and everything so Nia tutup balik Nia tak hiraukan apa-apa maybe dia dia ingat masa tu dia tak tertutup dia kan mamai apa semua tu so dia just tutup tak nak fikir banyak pasal benda tu tiba-tiba Nia dengar orang terkekek ketawa dekat sebelah dia mm, uh, tapi bila dia terbuka mata still no one tapi laptop yang masih berbunyi again Nia bermula uneasy lah macam unfamiliar dengan benda tu lagi so dia tutup lagi and try to turn off the whole thing lah. The laptop, dia turn off and then the switch off. And then, dia nak sambung tidur lagi. Suddenly, dia dengar lagi orang kekek-kekek dekat tepi dia. Dia macam, hehehe. Bila dia buka matanya, dia ada tengok tiga orang perempuan dari tepinya. Yang tiga perempuan, sebelah tu, sebelah tu. Bila dia buka mata, terus orang tu like macam melompat, ambil posisi, tahan kepala, kaki dan juga tangan Nia. Tiga perempuan, like literally Nia boleh nampak muka orang tu. Tapi it's not human. But this situation, Nia terangkan macam ni, dia kind of like sleep paralysis. Mm-hmm. Tapi dia boleh nampak benda tu like yeah. in human beings. Seorang tahan pala, seorang ta- tahan di tangan, lengan like this and seorang lagi tahan kaki. Mm-hmm. And then it's quite uncomfortable and macam suffocating. And then when Nia nak cakap kan seorang lagi yang tahan kepala tu dia like satu kepala Nia tu sebelah sini and then mulut dia ditutup macam ni. Nia like cubalah banyak perkara like semayang mm. tapi kena juga. Orang tu tak nak lepaskan. And then in the end 
first tu dia, mereka tu macam nak main-main je tau. Lepas tu dia macam into heavy things. Mereka balut badan Nia dengan uh, comforter. Nia dah tak tahu nak buat macam mana. So, Nia just crying. The creepy part is, semua yang dekat kaki bahagian kaki tu tadi, the worst part, Nia jilat kaki Nia. Ew. <laughs> But, Put fetish much? Yeah, and it's and it's really creepy, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> creepy and disgusting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like kaki Nia, and then bila benda Nia dah menjadi jadi, Nia tu macam keluarkan semua tenaganya, Nia jerit Nia pada situ, Nia cuba lepaskan diri dari tiga orangnya, and then Nia macam siapa sih Nia Nia menjerit lah, ah dah cukup. Bila Nia buat macam tu, benda Nia macam hilang terus. Tapi, in this situation, badan Nia still berbungkus dengan... Comforter. Yeah. So, that's the story about Nia. Tak suka. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that is a lembaga and eh, not a pervert? <laughs> Sebab Nia said, bila Nia menjeritkan, that tiga orang terus menghilang from eyesight. So, yeah. Pervert lah ya, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I think I think so. <laughs> How do you feel about it? How do I feel about it? I think I was just reminded by this one video I used to watch when I was a kid. I think it was on YouTube <coughs> at some point. Uh, I think my brother showed showed it to me. So basically, it was this man just sleeping, you know, like on a perfect queen bed with like white sheets, you know. She, he was just sleeping peacefully, like you know, with Mm-mm. straight. Yeah. Just looking up. Okay. But at some point, I think he committed doso or something, right? He was wrapped in the comforter and then became a pocho. Yeah. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> so, he became a pocho and then um, the maggots started, like, eating him or something. You yeah. Maggots? Yeah, maggots. Oh, no. How do you feel about it? You. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it, it reminded me of that story and because of that for years i think even now i usually have like one leg out whenever i sleep with my comforter because i do not want to be wrapped i do not want to be wrapped because yeah that's, that's by the funny. time you're wrapped by your own comforter or selimut mm-hmm. You cannot get out. Yeah. You cannot. What do you feel? I think it's this new story. I actually I have to some story like some sort of story like this lah. Because back in two thousand eighteen. Ah okay. I'm telling you the story now. Mm-hmm. I told you guys that I don't want to tell. But back in two thousand eighteen, uh, around seventeen eighteen lah. Back to my poly poly era, mm-hmm. polytechnic era. Um, back then I half like. Uh, I sleep macam tidur dalam satu bilik with my housemate um, yeah. housemate roommate lah roommate because setiap room ada dua orang so um, like every single night I have this kind of thing sleep paralysis setiap malam tu kena tindih and the worst part is setiap malam kena tindih setiap malam ada tengok bayangan hitam and it um, bayangkan uh, I have s- One semester we have like three three months six months right one semester we have six months so like satu semester tu lah then the char chara untuk elakkan benda tu Tony go to another room I sleep with my another friend so I, I'm not sleeping with my roommate I see. yeah that's that's the only thing I don't know uh, I don't know maybe it's the room itself ataupun disebabkan bilik kami dua di sebelah di sebelah apa di sebelah tandas sebab um ya yeah. so yeah i don't know no judgment so, yeah. or your roommate uh, yeah yeah so uh, i don't know but he ca- he's like mysterious guy and then i i don't say that he's creepy but mysterious like i, I i'm telling you that dia boleh tak tidur sampai 48 jam and dia boleh tidur sampai 48 jam And then, kerja saya masa tu, saya ulang alik kelas. Kalau dia tak tidur, dia bangun, dia baca novel. Kalau dia tak baca novel, dia tidur. That's it. And then sometimes, uh, his lecturer call me. 
uh, your roommate ada dekat bilik ke and then I said yeah ada dekat bilik sekarang dia tengah tidur oh dia penat sangat ke dia cakap macam tu I think so sebab so, uh, dia ada some sort of assignment so in until late night so I said like that lah so oh uh, because uh, it takes a week dah dia tak masuk kelas so uh, maybe he got some sort of problem so I don't I don't mind to think about him so yeah that's it I guess I'll share Like okay, I guess I'll share a story that kind of relates to the story that we yeah. just talked about. Yeah. So it's basically not being able to sleep, right? Yeah. Sleep, sleep paralysis. So yeah. I had this for a few years, sleep paralysis, and but it's 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 not continuous like him, like mm-hmm. six months straight. No, yeah. but it was very frequent, right? In different events. So um, which one should I t- tell? Uh? Okay, so Sarawak. I, I'm not from Sarawak, right? So I come from KL, and I go back to Sarawak to like celebrate Raya or like visit my family because my kampung is here. Okay, so sometimes there are very strong spiritual energy around me, right? To like, you know, just kind of conclude it that way. So I I just don't want to like explain it. In too much detail, but basically, of course, I need to like sleep in my sister's bedroom because mm-hmm. there's no other like vacant bedrooms in there. So you know, of course, I would think that I would feel a little bit more safe. You know, sleeping with my sister. That sounds wrong. Sleeping next to my sister. <laughs> sleeping next to my sister, and you know, just feeling that I'm protected by her presence. That type of thing. But basically. One night, I think that night is one of those nights that you know I stayed in Sarawak. I tr- slept early actually. I slept at nine thirty p.m. around that time, nine thirty to ten. Um, but uh, I woke up again at around twelve. I don't know if it was because I wasn't just tired, mm-hmm. or if it was something else, right? So I was like, oh, it's only twelve. I'm just gonna go back to sleep. Yeah. But I I felt so awake because you know it I for some reason I didn't feel sleepy at all right so I tried going back to sleep I couldn't that's the that's the worst part like why couldn't I have fallen asleep like I only had two hours ba yeah. I only had two hours of sleep I don't know why I'm so awake right so while trying to figure that out I was kind of like looking at my sister I was like. Oh, she's asleep already because during the time I fell asleep at like nine thirty ten, she was actually studying. So I was like, "Oh, okay, she's already sleeping." And then I saw it was twelve, and I was like, "Oh, okay, you know, everything's fine. It's fine." So I tried going back to sleep. For some reason, I felt a lot of pressure around me. Mm-hmm. So of course, I was lying down, but even when I like face outward on the bed, I still felt a lot of pressure. Inward, more pressure because I feel something on my back. But even if I look up, I feel like pressure is going from above. Yeah. So I'm like, what the hell are these pressure things, right? Yeah. So I just kind of um tried to ignore it. I tried to ignore it. I just you know closed my eyes, turned off the lights again because I turned on the lights first. Takut lah macam tu kan. I turned off the lights first, closed my eyes, still couldn't sleep or like fall unconscious i think it actually got worse when i turned off the lights because i started visioning some kind of face i don't know how to describe it but it's nightmarish i would have to say but i turned off the lights again this time all of the lights because obviously i wanted you know yeah. protection so i went back to the bed i tried going back to sleep no couldn't sleep And by that time, I think it was already one or two a.m. I didn't turn on my phone once. You know, I wasn't distracted or anything. And during that time, I was already Is it like sleepy again. Insomnia or something like. It might be. I tried going back to sleep, couldn't. So around two a.m., I went to my parents' room. For some reason, my mom, she seemed very used to it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I I don't know why she's so used to it, but I went to my parents' bedroom, and then my mom was like, "Oh, you couldn't sleep," and I'm like. Yeah, I can't sleep. Can I sleep next to you? And then she was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, come here." And I was like, "Don't you feel a little bit odd that your eighteen-year-old 
daughter is yeah. like asking to sleep yeah. next to you but she didn't question it but instead as you know i laid down next to her she just started stroking my head and like reciting du'as mm-hmm. and i was like how do you know i'm like being disturbed by probably spirits yeah right why are you so used to this so this is like a question that f- that has been going on in my mind for quite a bit yeah <laughs> but i'm not going to question it obviously even then i still couldn't sleep and i was dead tired but i fell asleep by the time that the azan subuh azan subuh <sighs> Um, it's been a that tedious malaman like it's a long night. Oh. Yeah, my body was like, oh, it's azan subuh. You can be more relieved now. You can relax, you know. But I just, I just didn't understand that. Just to put this out there, lah. I'm not a religious person, as you can, as you can tell. I'm more of a realist. That's why I was like, why do I feel glad to hear this? Nevertheless, I fell asleep that night. So that's one of my sleep paralysis episodes. I had another one also in Sarawak but it was when I was younger you know how when you go back to Kampo you sleep together with your cousins because in front of the TV, TV in the living room right yeah it was the same thing I slept mm-hmm. early I woke up around midnight I was woken up by the grandfather's clock we have a grandfather's clock at our Kampo mm-hmm. it's, it's still there it was ticking loudly and usually I don't mind it but it was ticking very very loudly during that time and for some reason it was literally two minutes before midnight. Obviously, the clock would ring. Like, doom, doom, doom. Yeah. right, during midnight. And I was like, why was I woken up at this time? I was woken up by the ticks, not the bell. I think that's the creepiest part for this. Because, like, I really just wanted to just sleep the whole night. But I couldn't do that. So I just stayed up until morning and slept in the evening. Yeah. That's one of my other sleep paralysis experience. Episode. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any like sleep paralysis? No. no. Or you so you want to explain to us that your life is really boring. <laughs> mm. Okay, Andrea, okay, can you come? Show your mm-hmm. face a bit. Okay, hi. She's been there the whole time, but uh. Yeah. Um, okay, she's not speaking. I'm just not gonna give the mic to her. <laughs> but uh, she's been there the whole time, so listening, do judging. Do you have any? Like any experience, like ghost experience, or not you this. just no. have some just no. friends, right? No. Yeah, you have any friends that have like paranormal guys, experiences? Yeah. Guys, this is not in the script. <laughs> we don't have a we, script. Yeah. I don't know what you mean. Yeah, we don't have a script. I won't. I won't say anything. We won't say anything. Why? Why on camera? Ah, huh? oh. <laughs> on camera, she's so shy. She's so like, like mm. that. <laughs> Anyway, do you have any other experience that you want to talk about or should I continue? Um, my experience, not about this sleep paralysis lah, tapi about this uh, wangian. So, oh my god, I also have a story for that. Okay, go on. Um, about this wangian, right? Ni macam perfume tau. Tony kerja dekat kucing juga, the area satu. Yeah. Actually, this Nia... My friend at Sato also. We met at Sato lah. We have have uh, same office and everything. So I, this is not like horror lah. Tapi it's like macam coincidentally. Yeah. Horrifically horror lah. Pagi pergi office macam biasa. Tiba-tiba perlu lapar. <laughs> yes, that like really tiba-tiba pergi office and lapar. Me uh, go for panda lah. Like order some food from panda. Mm. And then masa order for panda nya nak ada tercium satu bau and then I asking everyone inside the office do you have this perfume this kind of perfume kami yeah. padahlah macam mana bau perfume oh. and everyone macam give me the perfume lah and then yeah. I smell the perfume oh tak ada oh tak sama like macam really tak sama lah perfume and then balik dari kerja tercium bau yang sama like that perfume they follow me back to home masanya jua me masih tinggal dengan uncle kami yang kini itulah dekat rumah pun macam kami tanya aunty me kita pakai me ingatnya pakai softener nak me ingatnya bau baju me oh, softener then kami bandingkan lah baunya dengan bau softener si softenernya macam soft and this one like really perfume nya macam perfume lelaki next day I order lagi for panda ok and ada satu lelaki Hantar pepanda and then I ask, do you use the perfume? I terangkan lagi lah macam mana bau characteristic of the perfume. 
yeah 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 I use that perfume that kind of bow and then oh yeah and then why is follow me like the whole day and then balik to magi and then the next day masa mek mau masuk office this is the worst part at lunch hour juga sebab mek makan luar masa saya so mek si order food panda makan luarnya kan berjalan kaki je balik dari kedai kopi tu macam mek ada tercium bau nyagi bau wangi nyagi by the time kami tercium bau wangi nyagi kami dengar bunyi Kereta aksiden dekat belakang me. Puff, bam. Like really accident at rear satu. You know who is accident? The food panda guy yang hantar makanan me semalam ya. Eh, what happened to that guy? I don't know if he died or not, but he has an accident that time, yeah. Maybe it's just a coincident thing, so I don't know. Maybe it's just, it's just a perfume. Yeah, yeah it, it's not horror, but it's a coincidental horror, yeah. right? Memang masa yang macam... Bergetar. Ya. Mek tangga nak tolok masanya belum ada yang food panda pakai chat ya. Uh. So, nya like direct, direct call to WhatsApp. So, nya ada gambar WhatsApp yang siap. Bila mek tangga, macam kenal kan. So, bila mek cek lagi, that's, that's really him. What do you think about it? Is it like blow my mind, right? Tapi like, believe me, it's happened. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> speechless. I think we're all speechless. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's the story lah. My brain is still trying to process that, you know. Yeah. Wow. Do you ever experience something like that? I mean, not to a point where there's a accident lah, but something along the lines of Wang Yan and it's not my story. I think that's it. Yeah. I, I don't have any story. Oh, uh, no more? Yeah, I have okay. no more. I have one more story. Yeah, sure. I have one more story. Okay, this is like completely unrelated to, you know, whatever we talked about, the wangi, the sleep Sleep paralysis. paralysis. Because I think most of these stories are more related to like the other stories we, you know, just cerita earlier. So this is my experience when, I think this was before I went to the UK. So I was around 9, 10 or 11, around that time. I'm not really sure. It was quite a long time ago. But basically... My dad, he works as a lecturer at his faculty is like very close to like the forest area because apparently it was a new faculty technically. So it was newly built. So obviously it would be close to like a lot of forest. So back then when I was around that age, my dad used to bring me with him to uh, accompany him while doing work. And you know, to be honest, he shouldn't have done that lah because I was around that age. Yeah. I should be sleeping at 10 p.m., right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I went with him to until 3 a.m. The whole night, I was just in his office while he's doing work. Honestly, there wasn't much, you know, there wasn't anything going on because we were just inside a room. But when we were leaving so my dad's faculty is an open space with a garden in the middle when you step outside his office you are immediately outside right it's not like a closed off building no it's mm. not so at 3 a.m we decided to go home because you know he was done with his work for the day i packed up my stuff and all that i packed up for him so uh, I was saying, oh, I'm gonna wait outside for you because it was damn cold inside i went outside so the first time I heard a baby crying and I was like, wait, is there like a mom here right now doing work? Maybe like, you know, girl boss, right? But I knew that there was no one in that faculty at that time because when we arrived to that faculty, um, there were no cars. And I even asked my dad, no one works at night car. He was like, no, 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 there's no one here. You know, I was like, am I tripping? Am I tripping? So I just yeah. kind of like, you know, tekan tekan my ears and like, like sh- shook my head and all that. Like, what? So I-, I still heard the baby crying. So I tried looking around, like where it's coming from. But for some reason, there was no sense of a direction of where it came from. Because oh. it might be the it might be the echo, but it might also be, you know. Yeah. Because it doesn't exist because uh like uh, music or sound theory yeah uh the thing that making sounds is over there but the sound is over there yeah so like yeah omnidirectional right yeah. so of course i was creeped out so i went back in to the office my dad was like what's wrong and i'm like 
um nothing is fine i'm just gonna wait for you in here to pack up his stuff he was like oh no no it's fine i'm almost done you can just wait outside i know it's cold so i went back outside this time i heard a woman singing a lullaby it wasn't like an ordinary song i know that i couldn't make out the lyrics but i knew it was a lullaby because you know you you can tell a lullaby is a lullaby yeah. because it's very like babyish, right? <laughs> so something like that, lah. And of course, I was like more creeped out. Oh my but God, I have <laughs> so I was just like, um, is this a woman like trying to comfort a baby and all that? So I went back in. I was like, the I'm just gonna wait inside. So he was like, okay, 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 okay. His office is on the second floor. After we flew out of the office, we didn't hear anything. So second floor, to go back to our car, we have to go to the first floor and go down some more stairs. When we got to the first floor, you know how I said that there's a lot of rooms, mm-hmm. right? A lot of rooms and this garden in the middle, right? So to go to our parking spot, we have to walk past those rooms mm-hmm. first and turn left. But there was that one room and I was holding my dad's hand yeah. where I was I was on the left and you know the doors were on the side right all the doors are closed except for one to me the door was open that one door was open and there was a man you know sleeping in an office chair sleeping in an office chair yeah sleeping in an office chair with a very old TV but it's static nothing's playing on it it's just static static yeah okay maybe it's just a guy who passed out from work but i noticed there was also a bottle of alcohol on the floor oh. and you know isn't me so yeah that is not possible because people there are like religious as hell there is some possibility la, but that possibility in is very low i was just very creeped out i was like who the hell is this guy as i mentioned earlier there was supposed to be no one no one because the there were no cars. There were no cars at all, no motorcycles. It was just us. Let's tell my dad about it. So I looked to my dad. Hey, uh, do you see that? Some, there's someone here. I thought you told me that there, there was no one here. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, what are you talking about? And I looked back and the door was closed. Oh my God. The door was closed. And I was like, um, mm. um, okay, well, I'm not lying. I know what I saw. So now every time I go back to I'm always expecting something new. I think that faculty has something, to be honest with you. I'm not going to be exposing what faculty it is, but um, that faculty itself, it has a lot of stories and energy, I feel like. Anyway, thank you for listening, and thank you for submitting your stories to us. And I hope I did good for my first time podcasting. We did good, I think. Yeah, (laughs) I think. Um, Actually, we did good. Because it's so spontaneous, because before we go... In here, like we have the verse and so everything, then we and then we like quite comfortable, lah. Right yeah, now, yeah. You can, sure you can. I think you can tell. I had fun. I had fun. Yeah, I, I had fun like listening to stories and sharing my own stories. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah. we are house chat. I am Rias. This I is am Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Andrea just left. So, I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. See y'all next time. Yeah. Bye. Bye.